All right, back again, this time with the Odyssey uh, EFIS simulator, because a couple of people have asked uh, questions about how to do screen designs in the Odyssey, which is, of course, the legacy version. Slightly different, but similar principle to the IEFIS. It's just slightly less functional, I found, in, in playing around with it here. And I'll show you, basically, uh, what I've found out about it. So we've just opened it up, and it starts up uh, as does the IEFIS in a default project. And it's showing uh, default screens. Now, uh, let's say we want to do um, some screen editing. If you were to go to mode and design mode here and ask it to uh, design a module, what I've found it will do is uh, you don't have as many options here as you do in the IEFIS simulator. So what it will actually do is it'll open just a blank module. It won't open the default modules, which is a, a selectable option in the IEFIS one. So I'll do that and I'll show you. So if I go design flight module, so there's a new empty screen file. That's important. It's an empty screen file. Flight1.efm has been created in the screens folder. And there's an empty screen file. So if I go back out of this mode, the engine instruments pop back up because they're in the engine module. Um, flight instruments, or well, the flight module, was blank, and there it is. So now screen one is just a blank, essentially a blank screen. Uh, the rest of the screens haven't changed. These are still showing the default screens. So what it does is it looks in the screens folder. The, e the actual Odyssey EFIS looks in your screens folder and if it finds a valid screen file in there, it will display that in preference. Now, if it doesn't find a valid screen file in there, it will display the defaults. So that's why on page one here, it's displaying this new blank one that I created. But on page two and onwards, it's dis still displaying the defaults. So how do I fix that? Well, the simple answer is to get into the um, uh, into the screens folder and delete that. Now you can do that in a simulator. I'm not sure if you can do that in the real thing. I, I don't think so, but I could be corrected on that. So if I go into file manager and I navigate to the screens folder, we see flight1.efm and that's this empty file here, which is showing a blank screen. And if I just delete that, and exit and to get it to reinitialize if you like on that screen I'm just going to select screen 2 and then go back to screen 1 and now it's back to showing the defaults because there's nothing in the screens folder. So that's a, a really basic quick and dirty rundown of, of how it looks for things. So let's say we want to, um, we don't want to create a new blank one but we want to play around with the existing defaults. How do we do that? Well how I've done that is over here on the left when you select project it has a couple of options to copy current default screen files to screens folder of your current project uh, or create a new project and copy current default screen files there much the same thing except one is just using whatever your existing project is and one is creating a whole new project and performing the same action so let's create a new project uh, create a new project, so I'll click that one, call it a name, and call it Mike's Project. Okay, it's created it, and it's uh, created it to the screens folder, so what we should find is when we go back into the file manager, and we go to Mike's Project, screens, there's all the screen files. So what it's done is it's copied all of these default screen files across into the screens folder. Now, the way that we edit it changes slightly so we can go into design mode. Remember previously, if we didn't load those default screens into the screens folder and we selected this, it would come up with a blank page. Now if we do it, it comes up with a full page, which is what the default screen was. Now, 
all of these items here in the current module are what was in the default screen. So an example of, um, of adding something into the Odyssey uh, flight module was, uh, I think, trim indicators from memory. So I went searching for what in the item library here. They're a bit better named in the uh, in the IEFIS simulator. Uh, they've got the various tabs which group them slightly better. Um, so where's a trim indicator? Let's see something. Here we go. Pitch slash roll trim indicator. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to drag it because that's how it's done in this one. You get a few more options in the IEFIS simulator. I'm going to drag it. It probably doesn't matter where. I'm just going to drag it into there and I think yes it, so when you drag it in it'll just append it to the bottom of that list but look over on the screen here and a trim indicator has appeared now if we want a, a pitch one and a roll one we'll have to do another one so we'll drag another one across and now it says two pitch trim indicators now pitch trim indicator as I found is just a name um, you can turn it by double clicking on it and changing its properties and turn it into a roll trim indicator. So let's do that. You'll see they've put these two trim indicators in the exact same spot in the top left corner or near the top left corner of the screen, which is what both the Odyssey and the IFS simulators normally do when you're adding a new item. They put it somewhere up around the top left corner and you need to reposition it yourself. So. Let's just uh, double click on this pitch trim indicator and have a play around with it. So double click on it and it brings up its properties box where we can chop and change things and shift it around. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't know, I'm just gonna put it for argument's sake above the airspeed tape there. And I might raise it up a little bit. And uh, at the moment it's a horizontal uh, rectangle uh, let's make it a vertical rectangle for argument's sake. Um, pitch trim indicator. And you'll see the other option here is roll trim indicator. All right, I'm going to leave it as a pitch trim indicator and I'm going to click OK. All right, let's go to the other one and let's make that the roll trim indicator. So I'll double click on that. I'm going to move it next to it. About there, up to, and trim indicator type. I'm going to change to roll trim indicator. It doesn't change the appearance on the screen, but it will change the functionality of it. And uh, I'm going to leave that as a um, horizontal rectangle. Right. So now we've got our trim indicators in there. Um, Let's label them. We had pitch on the left and roll on the right. This is where I found it gets a bit interesting. There is a limitation. I don't know whether it is in the IEFIS, whether it's the same, but there is a limitation on the number of items you can have in a module. And uh, I'm going to show you how that actually works. So I want to label them. And if you remember from one of the other videos, if you've watched them, um, how we label something with just fixed text. It's called text universal or unitext. So we'll drag that onto here. And when you drag it, it just changes to unitext. It means exactly the same thing. Um, and my aim is to make this unitext just say the word pitch. So I'm going to type in pitch. Uh, see where it's appeared. There it is up there. It's right there, right on top of the airspeed tape. Um, it's The letters are far too big, so I'm going to shrink that down quite a bit. Let's go Arial 8 and get it nice and small, as you might expect for a little label for a, a trim indicator. And I'm just going to blip that up another three, four, five and across in an eye pleasing manner and there it is so now we've got our universal text the word pitch which will be there all the time um, displayed and uh, I'm happy with that I'm going to click OK 
Now what I want to do is I want to put the word roll above the roll trim indicator. So I'm going to put another one in. And there we go. Odyssey Simulator and Screen Designer. Page is full. Maximum of 130 items allowed. So I'm going to hit OK. What that means is there's 130 items on this in this list in this flight module already. So uh, that's a limitation of the Odyssey. I I'm not sure what it is on the IEFS if, if if there is one. I presume there probably is. Um, and I suspect it's probably a lot more than that, but I could be wrong. So what do we do now? Well, it, that means the screen's full. Um, what we can, we can do one of two things. We can put it in a different module. So the flight module is full. We could maybe put it in the engine module. It sort of doesn't make a lot of sense putting um, flight control type things in the engine module, but you could do that if you wanted to. Let's be a bit smarter about it. Why don't we just change the properties here? All it is is a block of text. So let's put a few spaces in it and type the word roll in it. And uh, there you can see the word roll has appeared there. It's a little bit further than what I want. So I'm going to delete a space and see where it goes. That looks about right. So now I've got pitch and a few spaces and roll and all it is is pasting a block of text there and they're about the right distance apart for what I want. I hit OK and there you have it. So that screen, that flight module on page one is, is fully populated now. We can't add anything else to that. So it's a limitation to bear in mind if you have an Odyssey and you're doing custom screens. That's, uh, that's how to do that. So if I exit out of this now, you'll see those indicators uh, forever on page one. Now, they're not on page two or three or anything. If you wanted to get them there, what I would do is I'd go back into design, I'd go to flight module, go down and find them. Those three things there. I would, by pressing the shift key, I can highlight a block of them. Uh, in the IFS simulator, note that these would be flashing now to tell you what you've highlighted. They don't do this in the Odyssey simulator. I'll right click, I'd copy them, copies them to, to the clipboard, and then I can uh, change pages. So for example, this one, which is page three, go into design mode for page three. Design flight module, it says here designing module flight 3.efm, so that's page 3, which is what we've had up there and what we want. And I'll go down here and highlight something and then I'll paste at end of list. There you go. So it's pasted in right at the bottom of the list, those uh, indicators and the text I did, and it's appeared on the page here. Click out of that. And now we've got on page one, pitch and roll. On page three, pitch and roll in exactly the same spot. That's how you do that. Now, getting these screens into the actual Odyssey. So what we've done, if I go into the file manager here, you'll see we've copied in the screens folder here, we've got all of the defaults plus our edited ones as, as well. So what we need to do is we need to select these or just, if you prefer, just select the ones that you have changed because if you haven't changed them and you want the default screens to appear in the Odyssey, um, you don't have to do anything. You only have to do, any, do something with the ones you've changed. So we've got flight one and flight three, which have got these pitch trim indicate, pitch and roll trim indicators. So I'm going to, uh, copy, I'm going to get out of that, flight one, and we'll do, oops, button problems here, try that one, All right, control, sorry, there we go, flight one and flight three, okay, uh, what I would do with those is I would, so I would plug my, uh, 
multimedia card into my computer or into your USB adapter, whatever you use, um, to get a multimedia card into your computer and show up on your, on your desktop or laptop uh, list here in the file manager. Then I would highlight those two, uh, like I just did, I would drag them across, they've got to go into the root of that drive, of that SD card or multimedia card, uh, copy them into the root of that, then unplug it, plug it into your Odyssey, and then what you will need to do is go to menu, when you boot up your Odyssey, you go to menu, and go to level two, so you press menu again. Number seven here, as you see it says install tasks. Similar with the IFS as well, you need to find the thing saying install tasks, and you need to uh, press that, so that's number seven. And down the bottom here you see an option, install screen files, add slash replace. What that will do is it will add any new screen files in there, um, that don't correspond with the current uh, file names it has and uh, it will replace, if it has two of the same name, it will replace the old one in your Odyssey with the new one that's on that SD card. So we would press 9 and it would install those files, then what you will find next time you start up your Odyssey, you'll have those edited screens will appear just as they are right here now. That's basically how it's done in the Odyssey. Uh, so um, if you've got any more questions or whatever, just put them on the, um, on the forums there and uh, I'll see if I can answer them. But that's, that's a quick rundown of how to do it in the Odyssey. Again, slightly different to the IEFIS, but the principles are basically the same. Thanks very much and I'll see you next time.